this sort of this 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 uh, kind of distaste for famous Americans was informing and influencing the marketing strategies of competitive brands around the world. Um, now, what has happened in the last couple of years? Well, there has been a change, and generally a change in a positive direction. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the things to throw chart after chart of public opinion information up here for you. But you can see that just between 2008 and 2009, attitudes turned much more favorable towards our country, particularly in Western Europe, countries Germany, France, Britain, and Spain, all tremendous rebounds in uh, popular perceptions of our country, in places like Indonesia uh, as well. And here we have to say that this really is the Obama effect to a considerable extent. Uh, the Economist actually ran an election poll uh, prior to the presidential election of 2008, and they did it in something like 112 countries, and only two voted for the Republican candidate. The other 110 voted for uh, now President Obama. There was clearly a, a lift, if you will, just from his personal charisma and his persona. And in many respects, you could say at the time that he was kind of a poster boy for public diplomacy, talking about understanding other people's listening to other cultures and whatnot. And that did have a big impact <coughs> on public opinion at the time. But note that that did not take place everywhere, and in particularly in Islamic societies like Turkey or Pakistan, which pre-Obama thought not very favorably about us, still do not today. And in fact, that is one of the big stories, not too much of a surprise perhaps given the recent headlines about the so-called mosque, that's not really a mosque in New York City, but we still have huge chasms of understanding between the Muslim world and the West as led by the United States. And even more recently, uh, in 2010, this is the latest uh, results from June of the Pew Global Attitudes Project, what we've seen is kind of a leveling off in attitudes towards us. Um, not much improvement, but not much deterioration either. So the Obama bounce is kind of finished, if you will. It's not, it wasn't the start of some new long-term upward trends necessarily. In the Islamic world, again, we've seen a little tiny bit of improvement in Turkey and Pakistan, but still only 17% of both of those countries think favorably about the United States. That's nothing. That's, that's really not a good picture whatsoever if we care about the future of relations with those two countries. And I would certainly argue that Turkey, because of its geopolitical significance in NATO and as a bridge into the European Union and that whole side, is a very important Muslim nation. And Pakistan, of course, now with the conflicts in Iraq, Afghanistan, and whatnot, it is really sort of the central zone in that part of the world. Hugely important countries, and these numbers mean a lot. They do mean a lot to the business community, too, because, you know, much as I love going to Istanbul, oh, we missed that slide, I guess I, I opted that out. Um, but they've come up with a Turka Cola uh, as a competitor to Coca Cola and Pepsi Cola. And uh, actually, the slide is coming up. But I asked him, uh, someone once a merchant, well, what's in this Turk Cola? And he smiled and winked. He said, half Pepsi, half Coke. <laughs> 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 um, some more good news um, is that when, we, uh, when the BBC asked people about America's influence in the world, the red line, people think our influence on global affairs is mainly negative, uh, has been coming down since 2007. The blue line, thinking that we're having a positive influence, has been going up. Finally, they crossed last year, and now there's a positive margin in our favor. Again, people giving us the benefit of doubt as being a force for good, not for bad in global affairs for the first time in many years. Uh, but that said, uh, again, there's still countries that think that our influence on the world is negative. And once again, we see Turkey and Pakistan at the top of the list, with majorities of their population saying, whatever we're doing, it's the wrong thing to do in global affairs. And here's where the Turk Cola thing comes in. I was ahead of myself, but it's, it's a real issue. Now, some of these brands, of course, are really just marginal brands. They're not a real long-term threat to the health of the Coca-Cola company or the Pepsi-Cola company, but they do represent challenges in certain markets. 
like Turkey, and one would argue that these challenges are exacerbated by this underlying sense of anti-American sentiment in those parts of the world. So, again, from the business community, there is exposure to these kinds of attitudes. Uh, but there's also a very positive exposure uh, to attitudes about business itself. Now, this particular chart shows public attitudes about whether business can be basically trusted to do what's right in the world. And it's from Edelman Research, a noted public relations firm. And as you can see, the yellow line it expresses the opinions of Americans about business. The red line is the opinion of West Europeans, represented by the UK, France, and Germany, about business. Now, as you see so dramatically, in 2009, Americans lost a lot of confidence in business. But since then, it has bounced back quite dramatically. That was a short-term blip, with the exception, I'm afraid, of just a couple of key industries, like banking and the automobile companies, where trust in them to do what's right is still quite low. But even in Europe, we see an increase in, uh, in trust in business. So that, we think, gives a foundation for business to be a positive contributor to some of these issues that I was just discussing. And you know, when you think about it, why does it make sense for business to get involved? Well, first of all, business touches more lives around the world than any national government. If you think of the customers and the suppliers, for instance, of multinational corporations with their headquarters in the United States, they touch billions of people every day, far more than our government ever could reach. Um, multinational corporations are good at international relationships, and they have to be, that's what they are. They have suppliers, they have customers everywhere, they have employees everywhere. Um, they are culturally attuned as a result. Uh, Coca-Cola, one of our board members, you know, if you go and ask them, are, are you an American company, they're going to say, no, we're not American, we're a global firm. Because 75% of our people work outside the United States, they're not Americans. Their CEO is now a Turk. Their previous CEO was from South Africa. So these kinds of organizations have been very good at integrating disparate cultures into <coughs> one organization with common mission and common objectives, so they do know how to work across cultures. Um, business, uh, we would argue, compared to government, is efficiently. It can move much more quickly. We were just talking about appointments to senior level government positions, which, you know, uh, jo senior job openings haven't been filled for 12, 18 months or so, even though the candidates have been identified and no one really has a problem with those candidates. Well, if you're a business person, you say, that's crazy, you know, we'd hire them, we'd hire them yesterday. Um, and there's the credibility issue, precisely because the business community is not involved in foreign policy, doesn't get involved in that end of politics. So business can and is well equipped to become a, a leading player and more significant contributor to these diplomatic issues, but should it? I mean, what's the interest of business? So let's talk a little bit about some of the key issues that the business community faces in the United States. And we would say that there are three key trends affecting business. There are many others, but we would highlight these three as perhaps the most important. First, of course, is the economy. What's been going on in the macro economy? And that's pretty much a short-term trend. You know, what's happened in the last year to two years, what's going to happen in the next year to two years in the macro economy, of course, affects every single business person in the country. Second, technology, in particular changes in communications and information technology have changed the reach of businesses, how businesses communicate with their customers, with their suppliers, with their own employees, and in terms of information technology, of course, has radically changed the way many businesses operate, increased productivity dramatically, pretty much across the board. So, second major trend. The third one, we would argue, is globalization and the increasing interconnectedness of American businesses with businesses, customers, supplier bases all around the world. And we think that is an inexorable trend. It is not something that is going to be reversed. 